So this page is probably one of my favorite pages. I think it is my favorite. Um, it does seem to be like a fan favorite too, so a lot of people that buy the book, they like this page. It's called The Happy Chicken, and, and on the back of each page in the book you get a description and some ideas, and, and even a quote. So, you know, the, the story goes, it's called The Happy Chicken. It says, a happy chicken from the state of Oaxaca stops to pose for the camera before having a snack. He's quite the dresser. He insists on wearing very bright colors and showing all the hens his impeccable style. Nice. Consider this. Consider your feelings as you draw the faces of these cute critters. Holding a joyous feeling while you draw will make your drawing feel more joyous. Feeling joy while you draw a smile can bring it to life in a way that other emotions could not. I think that's worth considering because uh, a lot of these characters are happy and if you know, you're know you maybe not in that state, um, it's probably gonna work out well for you, but if you're drawing on your own and you're trying to draw characters, you're probably gonna draw more what you're feeling. But in any case, having that proper feeling engaged, connecting with your character, that's gonna, that's gonna help the look uh, for sure. Second point is flowing the wood texture around the knots and the wooden fence parts is an easy way to keep it feeling grounded and real. Okay, and then the third one is there are many iconic shapes you could memorize here. The cactus, the sun, and the eyes have shapes that are useful in your own drawings. So what that one talks about, or I'll actually say the quote first. No one becomes an artist, we simply realize we've been one all along. I think I came up with that. I'm pretty sure. So that's the happy chicken page. Um, what was that last point? So the iconic shapes idea. This is where a book like mine here can help you draw on your own. There are iconic shapes in this on this page. That if you learn them, if you just try to understand the basic principle of it, you'll be able to draw them. Uh, for instance, the cactus is one. It's really just a tall, kind of rounded cylinder with a couple uh, little arms coming off. That's a cactus. I did it over here, did it over here, and the length and the variation, that's kind of, it's up in the air. You can do whatever you like with that. I, I would say wood texture is similar. Um, you have things like leaves, Leaves are this kind of eye, eye, I would say like eyeball shape. It's a leaf shape. And when you start to figure out how to draw a leaf, you draw it over and over. This rounded shape here, that's the same as the clouds. You see, same as bushes. And you learn some of those fundamental kind of shapes. You learn how to do it with your hand. You can start to actually draw on your own uh, more competently. So for those who are new, who just have just joined, I'm gonna be working with a uh, mechanical pencil today. I got a 0.5 millimeter, which is smaller. Typically 0.7 is what, what people work with. Uh, or I would say it's probably more normal. 0.5 is probably uh, maybe more for artists. And that's what I'm gonna work on today. Um, I think my drawing style will probably be similar to what I've done before because it's one of my favorites. So if you can, join on, uh, join with me, draw along, print it off, uh, you know, use one of your pages. Otherwise, you can just hang out and, and maybe maybe get inspired to doodle or, uh, or just hang. So as always, I just try to figure out where I want to start. There's no, no specific starting point. And as for, as for questions, I think I missed some of the comments yesterday. Sometimes when a comment comes in and then another comment comes in as I'm drawing, I, uh, it can get go higher on the list, and so I can actually kind of miss it. So I apologize if I missed a couple of those. I'll try to be more vigilant today. So if you have any burning questions for drawing or art, or if you bought the book and you're Heck, if you're enjoying it, let me know what you think. Um, but if you're struggling with something, definitely this is a great opportunity um, to put it to me and, and see if I can help.
So I'm keeping this little break here on the eye because I actually really kind of like it. So I definitely want you to draw your own way. Uh, you can follow along and do it like me, but I'm totally, uh, I totally want this to be your drawing book, your drawing page, your drawing experience. So this is kind of a foundation uh, to help you, help you start. Ah. Okay, Vashti asks, uh, her daughter asks, why is one eye red and the other eye blue? That was just a, a design choice. Um, I think it's called like Hectra chrome, chromium or something. It's a real thing that happens in animals and people where one eye can be one color and the other one can be a different color. And when I made this page, I decided, actually, I want this page to be really colorful. So I want my, uh, my chicken here to be a really colorful chicken. And I thought, well, what better way to make him a little bit more interesting than if his eyes weren't the same color? There's no rule book on uh, creative choices like that. Not really. Even though, you know, I base it on maybe something realistic. Even if it weren't real or possible, it's still a fun thing to, to be able to, to play with and do. So thanks for your question. That's uh, that was a good one. So I'm just resting my hand on my palm and using that to really help my my fingers really make these arcs. A lot of the things uh, you probably notice if you've been if you've been hanging out here and and going through the drawing with me is I probably repeat things a lot, and some of those things are the fundamental things to practice. You know, like your line quality, that's definitely a certain fundamental. Um, positioning your hand and making making good lines, it's a fundamental. It takes practice to be able to do it. And these books are, are fun. But they're also really good at, at practicing these mechanical kind of uh, things. He's just so great. So this view, the way he's looking, he's not looking at you straight on or to the side. He has this, they call it a three quarter view because you can see uh, three quarters of his head. So his head's turned. You see part of this eye and you see the whole of this eye. And it's a really dynamic, um, really dynamic uh, look. Kind of hard to pull off if you're new to drawing. And Joel says this one's cute. Ah, oh, thanks Joel. I agree. I think it's so happy and it, it has this dark twist to it that I don't know if many people would uh, pick up on but this uh, little worm guy here he is uh, he's fairly happy but chickens eat worms so I think the chicken might be about to have some some breakfast or some lunch and so it's, it has this kind of darker side to it that's uh, makes it actually a little bit funnier in a way yeah so the worm is just happy-go-lucky living his worm life chickens happy-go-lucky a living uh i guess it's a her i heard someone say that i think i think chickens are are hers i don't know if uh i can't speak to that And then I have a nice, a nice butterfly in here having a great time. And they're just in this kind of like gentle setting down in Mexico, in Oaxaca. So the whole page when I designed it, uh, gave it like a more yellowish tinge to try to show, um, I suppose a little bit more heat 
you know, show how, how the whole setting is warm. <laughs> Are roosters hymns? I don't even know. Do you know, Joel? <laughs> yeah. I forget. I, someone mentioned it. They were like, yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that would be a girl. And I think I was calling it, calling this chicken a hymn. Never, never thought it through. In the end, doesn't matter. Pretty happy chicken. That's the point. So Jenna asked what would be a good technique to add details to the feathers. Yeah, good uh, good question. Let's see. Well, really looking up references will help. If, you, if I draw some something more of a realistic feather, I think it looks like this. And then those are kind of stacked on top of each other, right? So it's these details here that really make up uh, details of feathers. So if you look up, uh, maybe Google feathers, um, let's say these, these colorful ones here that are poking out. I don't know if I want to detail them. I might not want to because uh, the lines that that I drew here are, uh, they're kind of, they're cool, but you can add detail, it's, it's, it is true too, but they're a lot like leaves actually. Like this leaf here has this center line. And that's a lot like what a feather has. So if I drew a center line, and then I drew lines going up. But then I show, I break up the edge a little bit, because otherwise it'll look a lot like a leaf. But breaking up that edge makes it appear more like rustled and and used. Um, but definitely look up references to to see what details you could add. Uh, I'm not entirely sure myself. I think a lot of times when I draw, I do I do it from a simple idea, and uh, but I, you can totally flesh it out. I, I could as well, you know. That's, but that would be what I would do is look up. Um, Look up the uh, look up references. Oh, Bea, thanks, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Let's read some of these comments. So, rooster and hen are both chickens, but people generally refer to hens as chickens, but not a rooster as much. Yeah, so there probably is. That's the difference between uh, girls and and boys. Part of it. Cousins live in Mexico. Awesome. So I'm gonna draw it a little bit darker in here as I've done in, in previous videos because that's where light has a hard time reaching is in between these where they kind of overlap um, and they're maybe um, they're over top of each other you see and I'm doing kind of flicks starting points that just helps me to get this kind of like more fleshed out line. I'm going to continue these little detail lines. Um, I'm going to continue them on other parts of the feathers. And I'm actually not going to worry about going over the lines. That uh, that will actually make him look a bit more more rustic, more more like the real feathers. And it adds texture is what it does. It could be Spain. I suppose, uh, well, I wrote in the thing that he's from Oaxaca, which is a state, I believe, in Mexico. I believe it's a state. It could be a city. I don't know. Sure, I did research it, and then I forgot it.
remember a little girl laughing upstairs. I wonder if that comes through on the audio. <laughs> Well, for those of you who are drawing along, what uh, tell me what you're thinking of it. What what stands out to you, or what's your favorite part? What's the most challenging part? I actually I don't really know. I know there's lots to do on it. Um, Amy says sorry I'm late. That's okay. No worries. Welcome. Better late than never. This, when I, when I designed this page, I was thinking of a few things because partly my goal is not just to inspire people to draw or to give them something to draw. Uh, I am thinking about what people could learn from, from spending time on a page. Often when people draw, they just draw characters and that, that I was guilty of that. That's what I did growing up. I drew characters. I never drew the backgrounds. So this is a chance to have a fully composed illustration. Where you have characters, you have foreground elements, these leaves are kind of in the way of the camera, in our, our view. You have the mid-ground kind of elements, you have background elements, and you have even farther background elements. So you have um, mountains, you have a sun, and what co composition is, composition is the arrangement of all these interesting pieces. So composition is, I put the sun here, the cactus here, I put the, the church here. I put a couple well-placed cacti um, and the animals in very specific spots. And I tried to do it in a an interesting way. So all those choices are designed. And you can do that on, a, on your own drawing too. Let's see, so Vashti says, the most challenging thing for me is not getting my lines all wiggly. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think that's challenging. Um, I suppose in the end, my solution was just to uh, accept that my my lines are going to be a bit wiggly, and try to see them as beautiful still. Because that that just might be where you're at, but that doesn't mean they're bad lines. I do wiggly lines on purpose. I do sketchy lines on purpose now. I used to be a perfectionist about it though. Stephanie says, inspiring and spell check. Well, I'm happy you're inspired. That's awesome. Yeah, I want to do more of these because I think I always found it super inspiring when uh, when I would see someone drawing. I, it would make me want to draw. Maybe I was competitive, but really I think it was just the fact that I understood it, I could connect with it, and I, I got something from it. So you see someone else enjoying that thing and you're like, oh man. I know what's there for me. Oh, welcome, Aunt Kim is here. Thanks. Hopefully, you have a drawing page. Your your page turned out great yesterday, or the day before. I can't remember. Jenna says, "Best part of the characters is that the characters uh, have so much potential for personality, and the most difficult part is making it look more realistic." I I agree. I mean, they're not realistic characters, so dabbling in I think you'd be dabbling in realistic rendering kind of things which is like your lighting how shadows fall how to define textures that's what's going to make it look more realistic those are but those are just elements in the end uh, I think the characters are just going to be cartoony and you can't get away from it um and the, but the background's fairly realistic other than the fact that they're all like kind of iconic versions um, of these things. And I'll talk a little bit about maybe like rendering some of the, the elements on this page a little more realistically and what you can do. Really a lot of it is texture. Um, just like these feathers, they are turning out a bit more realistically. Yeah, so Vashti's son says the most challenging for me is to stay on the lines. Yeah, I, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's interesting, right? That you, you have these lines, you know what to do, and yet you have to kind of like communicate to your hand to do what you want it to do. 
like please follow this line for me go where I want you to go and uh, please make it look nice <laughs> and then that it's funny to say it that way but that's really what we're doing we're talking to our hands we're instructing our hands um, to make the moves and so the more that you make the moves the more you draw um, the better that communication will be and that's the difference between someone who draws all the time and someone who never draws someone who draws all the time isn't necessarily like more intelligent they're not they, they don't necessarily have the ability to solve more problems but they spend more time developing communication um, and that's the same with learning like another language right you spend more time speaking that language you're gonna be able to speak that language better and I think drawing literacy is a thing. So some people are illiterate, they can't read. Maybe they never learned. Maybe they really just always shied away from that, that uh, doing that thing. You know, when I'm, I'm a person who doesn't really read novels. I find it really difficult and I've spent some time doing it, but not as much as others. But I've spent a lot of time drawing, and so then my literacy for drawing is way higher than most people. And I definitely don't claim to make that that makes me better, a better person, but makes me uh, better at communicating with drawing, better at depicting the things I want to draw. And you know, I would also say you don't have to follow the line super well. Try to be okay with making making it a bit wobbly and and getting it close. I think in the end, the you, what you can get out of this is having fun. You know, feeling what it feels like to draw. And then learning to do it on your own and saying, how, how do I make a character? But I think this, this kind of activity, it really can help you, uh, you face the challenge of of uh, controlling your hand. So Glenn says the most challenging part for me is making smooth lines and knowing where to add depth. Those are, um, you know, the smooth line thing definitely sounds to me like that comes with time and experience. And I would say that's that the depth part that has more to do with understanding. Um, it would be similar, like experience will lend that to you, but a lot of that part is your understanding. So understanding of, let's say, form. So form are, is three dimensions, right? You have animals and objects in three dimensions. How do I uh, illustrate three dimensions? How do I How do I make this character look more 3D than 2D, because 2D is flat. That's all it is. If it looks flat, it's two-dimensional. Now, a lot of these pages, I actually draw to uh, make it a bit easier to make 3D. For instance, this line here. It show it actually separates this whole side, this whole like plane of the face, from this darker side. Even the eyes being on two different sides or having these highlights on the eyes, those little things make this look more 3D. A lot of these other elements are two-dimensional. So to push that, um, you can do it. There are ways, um, and you've learned a little bit about it. A lot of it can be just lines though, and the way that you shade. So studying lighting, taking a lamp, and you know, putting a, a hard light onto some, let's say like some solid objects, seeing how the shadows are like thrown away and how what they land on, the angles they make, and trying to add that into your drawing. Um, those are the ways that you develop that understanding. When I was younger, um, I used to do a lot more 3D modeling. And I was doing 3D modeling, and I was drawing and everything. And I had a lot of trouble drawing freehand, just like drawing a chair, going in any direction I wanted, you know, facing any direction. I, I really I couldn't seem to do it. I didn't understand how people did it, but because I was working in 3D software, making 3D chairs, rendering them, which means you set your camera up, you set your lights up, you hit render, and it, 
it makes a much really nice version of it. Um, as I did that for a long time, inevitably, I actually started thinking in three dimensions. So now I can draw a chair at any angle. It, and it's like I noticed my thinking changed. And I, I, I never did really resolve if, uh, if that's normal for everybody or if that was unique to me because I was doing, I was spending time doing this unique thing. And I suspect the latter. The more you spend time um, thinking in a certain way, I think the more that that will, that will flourish in you. I think we inherently know that's true from just life experience. And that could be negative or positive. Yeah, Jenna asks, she says that I have a copy line video with more about lighting and shading on YouTube. Yeah, that's right. I did do. I made a video that kind of talked about um, a little bit more about lighting in three dimensions and how shadows kind of work a little bit. Oh, I forget what it was exactly now, but I, I had some clay objects. And it's like a triangle and a circle, and I just talked about like how to approach that a little bit differently. So if you're interested, just look up uh, Copia Line on YouTube. You can see some of my videos there. If you want me to cover a certain video, uh, there's actually a section on, on our website. If you go to the video section, um, I believe there's a little box at the bottom where you can submit your requests. And I can see if I can help educate you in some way. Oh, thank you, Joel. Joel likes the feather details. I do too. I think they're looking pretty cool. So this, uh, I've talked before about rules. Create a rule. If you follow that rule throughout your drawing, uh, you get this nice consistent thing that happens. That's kind of happening with these feathers. All the feathers follow a similar rule. I got this line in the middle. I got these lines that kind of just go up. And because that's happening a lot, it's a pattern that's forming. And I want to try to figure out how to, how to not just have it be right there, but kind of draw it in on the tummy. So I'm going to draw just some extra lines just like these have extra little lines and I'll try to make sure they're similar. And to have it flow nicely, I'm gonna direct them up because he's a round character. So I'm just gonna have it go like this and that will actually help him look more three-dimensional. And if I go up here, I'll, do, I'll just go around like this. So you consider him as like one sphere almost. And each day I've been really trying to finish my drawings. I'm not gonna try to finish this drawing today. I want to just spend some time relaxing, doodling and, and talking. And I'll get as far as I can get. And because it's one of my favorite pages, it's, it's really easy to just kind of like sit down for a long time and do it. Very relaxing, very meditative. And if you've enjoyed doing this as you participated, um, you know, there are more inexpensive options on our website. You can get to uh, download more pages from the book, and print them, and, and spend some time, find some time in your day to make it a relaxing, uh, you know, part of your day. Or better yet, get the book. And uh, I think we recently reduced the price. So you could always get one and it comes with some extra pages. And then that could be a way that you have some self-care time. Or if you know anyone that is looking for something like this, it really is, it's perfect for people that are curious to draw but not willing to spend years figuring out how. Jill says it's almost like if he was a wireframe model. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to think about it. Because in three dimensions, that's exactly what it is. You, th you look at the, 
the shape of this tail. And it's like, you can think of it flat, but if you try to picture it in 3D in as a wireframe model, you can start to see, okay, because this arc here is here and this one's here, this one's here, you can almost see the way the plane should be going. It should follow this line, this parallel line, but it morphs into this kind of flat tail. So I can do that. I can play with that that plain idea. And that that's advanced, but that's how you do it. So you can figure out how to do it yourself, or if, if that's too hard for you, don't even worry about it. It's okay. There's no nothing saying these drawings have to look 3D. I think that's totally an aesthetic choice. Saying I I want to my drawing to look um, quite 3D. Because in the fundamentals of drawing, form is um, an additional, it's not a necessity. So line work is, is one, you know, that's one fundamental. Pattern, if you add pattern to a drawing, you really work on your patterns, getting some in there, it's going to look more interesting. You get your, your value scale down right, it's going to look more interesting. And then if you add form, you make sure it has some clear form that makes it even more interesting. So I do things like these little darker triangles. I'll show this to you. Because this part of his hair is, I want it to look like it's deeper there than here. That little tiny choice, when it adds up over time and you do a bunch of those, it's gonna look more 3D. It just, it has to. And so if you do, even just in your line work, those little three-dimensional cues, uh, people are going to pick up on that. And it just makes the image a little bit more fun. I really love drawing three-dimensional, uh, you know, drawing form. Because in the end, what it what it, you're doing is you're drawing lighting. How light, how light falls on an object and how the shadows interact um, with that object. I think that's one of my loves. It didn't used to be. It used to be. I loathed it. <laughs> I really only cared about lines and detail. But then after many years of that, it gets boring. You go, well, I don't know what else to do. I've done, I've exhausted my lines and my detail. Now I don't care about what I'm doing. So you find something new. And I think form and lighting are pretty massive when it comes to rendering things drawing or painting. So I think I fell in love with those a little bit. Joel says makes little bits of the page seem like they're popping off the page. Yeah, it's quite true. I, I think if you can do that, you can um, really make it look like this chicken standing here in this space and this butterfly is much closer to us. If you can figure out how to do that, um, it's going to be pretty fun. It's at least fun for the artist. I imagine when people look at these things, they go, oh yeah, I see what you did. But for the artist, it's like you get to spend time there. And then when you accomplish a thing like that, when you actually pull it off, whether it's by mistake or on purpose, uh, it's pretty fulfilling. I guess what's nice to see when people get excited about their art, what are they excited about? Because that's probably the thing they love about it. You know, my, my lines, the way I draw my lines, that's something that took me a while to to develop and I did it by looking at some of my favorite artists and people that I really love their line work and it helped me understand what I love about lines so then my line style the way I drew evolved and now I'm a real big fan of the way I draw <laughs> I draw drawings that I'm like wow this is great it's not even like being arrogant it's simply I'm a fan of myself because 
I draw like some of my favorite artists. But understanding what you're attracted to with art, that, that's something to learn about yourself and explore. And it means exposing yourself to different uh, artists and their work. You know, if you like movies, you might watch a whole bunch of movies and find a director and go, wow, I really like that director. So I'm going to watch more of his movies because this movie was great. I'm going to see what, what other movies he did. And you see a couple of them. A couple of them are really great. So you go, oh, man, I, this guy's awesome. I'll, I'll look up all his movies. Turns out you like all of his movies. Well, now you know maybe a style of cinema that you want to really explore and see what else is out there like that. And I think it just enriches your life, gives you a bit of culture. So I put a little extra line in here, because he seems he seems like a bit of a chubby chicken. So I put a little triangle there with the line coming off. And it's like a little chubby fold tucking under this. Uh, I don't know if he's wearing a suit. I don't know. But I, I love it. So he's pretty well done, I would say. I would call him mostly done. There's probably like some line thickness parts I would work on more. So I've still got about like 23 minutes. I think I'll, I'll move to a cactus. Um, I like the characters so much I'll, I'll probably end up wanting to work on them in another live stream. We're going to be switching live streams to evenings. Um, and I might even do it starting next week because we're all supposed to be quarantined. We're all hanging out indoors now and not seeing others if we're if we're being a part of the solution of shutting this virus down. So what I would do with, with this cactus, kind of a little bit what, what I'm doing, I'm making some straight lines, but I'm gonna try to make it look a bit hairy, which means breaking those lines up. I don't know if you know this about cacti, but cacti are pointy. They have little sharp needles on them. And you could do needles all over this thing if you want. You can make the whole thing needly. I don't like that when I do it, so I like to break it up. Um, you need to have some contrast, I think. And maybe it's just a style I like to go from some straight lines to some broken areas. And I think it would, it would just give it a little bit more character than if it was just lots of needles. But if you do that, uh, you know, more power to you. It's it's totally subjective and what you're wanting to get out of your uh, your cactus. And what's what's interesting about it too is you see that the general cactus shape is very simple. It's like this simple squiggly line, right? This one cylinder with these two arms. And then when you actually redraw it, you can add all these this extra detail. So if you drew your fundamental basic cactus shape on your own, right, let's say you got a piece of paper. So I'm gonna go arm, top part, and I'll do an arm down here. That's the basic shape. So now if I'm gonna like add to my drawing, I do the same thing I just did. I redraw it, except now I'm gonna add some, some texture to it. I'm not going to worry about erasing my other, my other line there and making it perfect. It doesn't need to be. Okay, now I have more of a textured cactus shape. Could add some three dimensions. So add just a few more lines around the cylinder parts, which you can look at a cylinder or some. You can Google cactuses and, and draw it from there. Then you can draw other little things, rocks some grass. They have a little drawing. Then you can color that drawing. Take some colored pencil. Take some paint, a watercolor or something, color it. But it kind of starts with your simple shapes and it goes to how do I add detail? Well, you redraw. So I'm going to work on this area a little bit because Definitely feels weird just to have my nice looking cactus sitting there all by itself. So 
So with these long lines, I'm not just powering through them. I'm actually trying to follow through and then I leave it. I kind of like taper my pressure off and I pick my pencil up. And that's so I don't end up with some glaring kind of like strong line I don't really want. And if I do make a mistake, it's more subtle. So I want to make sure the line is kind of hard behind him. And that way they, they stand apart from each other. So this fence is actually a square, but it's drawn at an angle. So if you were looking at it, it would be more like you're looking at it like this. So if I drew another one here, connect to the lines, this is kind of what you're seeing. You're seeing this, this light side here and this dark side here. And that perspective matches our chicken. That's why this side is darker than this side. So with that in mind, I'm going to actually make this edge here the darker edge. Mm-hmm. So Joel's asking, he's saying that some people, you notice a lot of people start with real sketchy lines. Um, uh, instead of one solid line, how can these people get past that while still making the exact line they want? I think the answer is confidence. So you're talking about people that kind of draw like this. And this is, this is how they draw. And they, so this is sketching. That's what I would call this. This is finding your way. So even if I do a drawing, if I were to draw this character, I would, I could draw a cylinder. I would draw roughly where maybe the beak shape, right? Draw the eye, draw the other eye. So I'm sketching. So how do I get from that to this? Well, drawing this will help, but, um, Sketching isn't bad, but this kind of sketchy line, like it is, it is a confidence issue. It's saying, don't know, <laughs> I don't really know that I can make this line um, smoothly if I just go like this, you know? So I think developing confidence in their, their ability to um, trust themselves, say, okay, I'm gonna make this line, allow myself to make a mistake, Okay, and then um, if I do it, awesome. If I don't, I made a mistake, that's fine, I'll try again. And as I do it more, I'll develop confidence. And then I'll be okay um, just making lines. So in calligraphy, one of the things you do, as well as you practice doing, uh, my pencil's acting funny. You practice doing this shape and that allows you to write M really nicely. But practicing this shape matters. Or this one. And that allows you to write a W or a U, right? N. And that's confidence, I think. The more that you practice those kind of uh, things, the less you use sketching as a crutch. Um, and you try to be a little more bold, I think that will, that will help. But it means kind of being daring, you know, willing to, willing to make a mistake, willing to mess up a drawing. And I've talked about that before, but that's, that was pretty fundamental for me. So I, I've been drawing for years and years and years, and I, I would find, I would still get to the point where I would be afraid of uh, messing up my drawing. It happens to me very rarely now. At some point, I, I decided, I said, I'm not going to let my, my fear of messing up my drawing control me because I'm, I'm going to make thousands more drawings.
I'm not done drawing. So if I'm okay with losing a drawing here or there, uh, even if it, I liked it at one point, then uh, I'm free. I'm free to make mistakes. And by doing that, I'm free to enjoy what I'm doing, regardless if I make mistakes. And it was funny because at that point, is that's when I started drawing well. Because no longer was I afraid. I definitely did make mistakes. I definitely did ruin some drawings. And I have no idea what those drawings were anymore. They don't matter. Because I've made lots of drawings that worked out awesome, that I really liked. You know, renderings, paintings, and all that. So Joel's saying, he says, it's interesting to see that you still do seem to go over your lines a few times, lifting the pen off the paper, returning to it frequently, but your lines stay singular. Partly that's practice, it seems, but maybe just also being aware that that's what you want. Yeah, I think you said it really well. Um, I think I, I learned to enjoy a little bit of... Uh, of sketchiness with my lines and I, I realized that yeah maybe that maybe I did make that what I want I know when you're doing more cartooning you need to be making some pretty perfect um, lines with your pen and that's difficult when you're doing it manually like pen and ink so cartoonists more power to them if they're really good um, you know, I, I worked digitally a lot, so um, working digitally is pretty forgiving. It's when I'm painting in Photoshop or something. There's an undo button, so I can make my line, and if it didn't turn out great, I just press undo. And then it goes right back to, like, not being there. And I can do it over and over, and then end up with these perfect lines. But when I draw um, by hand with a pencil... I don't want perfect lines like that. I, I think I get them anyway. Like, I'll do a shape, and but I'm already on to the next line, so I'm not, not worried about that one, that one shape. Even if I'm not staying um, true to, like, what's underneath here, a lot of times it's the life of the line that kind of comes out, you know, with a flick and altering your course saying, oh yeah, that, that went a little bit wonky, I'm going to do a different kind of flick now. I think, I think it's also seeing beauty in lines. Um, you could look at a line and, and really see the imperfection of it, and that could really bother you. And so your goal could be perfection. And that's what we think, you know, is good for a while, I suppose. Or maybe that could just be our goal entirely, but all these lines are perfect. All these lines are beautiful. They, they are beautiful. But if, if, it's, if we can't see that, if we don't know how to enjoy their beauty, um, then maybe they're ugly. Maybe they're not what we want. So I think partly for myself, I've just learned that my lines um, are unique to me. And because of that, they're kind of special. If I'm really shooting for something and I'm having trouble making the mark, that's maybe that's different. But if I'm, if I'm just making marks and I'm expressing myself and I'm uh, enjoying that expression, then I think the lines just kind of speak for themselves. And then maybe the the goal is just kind of different then. So when I'm, I'm drawing this line of this roof here, I'm I'm actually not going to follow it exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some tiles, just kind of like how I did with the feathers here. So I'm gonna indent a little bit, and put like a bit of a textured edge. I don't know if you can see that. So I got a few minutes left. I got like nine or ten minutes. 
you have any any other questions, definitely uh, ask. Otherwise, I plan to do more live streams. This has been a really fun week. Um, it's pretty rewarding sitting here with people and drawing for them and hopefully inspiring them. You know, I made this book to really get people to draw that um, never would. And that might be you. So if you want to support me and, and what I'm doing, then share it with others and see if you can find people that would like to try drawing who might not uh, normally like want to give it a go or learn or and you could even do it as an experiment if you know someone who absolutely believes they can't draw give them one of these pages <laughs> so Jenna says should I put lines around the Sun does it take away from it being shown as a light source if that makes sense yeah that makes sense um, so a light source is as it sounds, it's the source of a light. So if you look at the sun, it's pretty bright. It doesn't have any dark lines around it. Um, and if it does, you should get your eyes checked. But you could put lines around it. I myself would not put thick lines around it. But let me just try it, we'll see. Uh, it, if you put lines around every one of these shapes in this page, uh, It'll look good. This was a drawing originally that I did, um, and I converted it to a copiographic image. So you could, but if you want to keep it as a light source, um, I don't know. I guess you could even put thick lines around it. It's really a style choice. You don't have to put lines on it if you really want it to seem. Um, stand apart from everything else on the page so I don't know that one maybe is subjective I wouldn't be afraid of that though I would say just do it have some fun with it and uh, see if you like it or not so I do this thing where I'll make a mark take my hand away look at it try to feel my page and then I'll go back to make sure and this is me gauging if I'm going in the right direction if I'm maintaining balance the way I, I like it to so I want my lines to be a little bit thicker now just based on my impression and I think it's because I want this to be grounded over here I want the weight of this whole image um, to be balanced and so that's where you're gonna have like different line weights and that's the part of the usefulness so the biggest thing you could do to support us if you're interested in that is uh, you know buy some books um, or see if someone can wants to buy a book. We produced a whole bunch of them and uh, we're working hard to sell them and continue making more because I have I have an idea for uh, my next book. I want it to be about it's gonna be on characters like this. I think it would be more individual characters on a page than rather than whole illustrations but it might be a little bit of both. And I think that would be really fun. I think the potential for these kind of drawing books is pretty big. But we need to be able to fund ourselves to do it. So now I'm just dabbling with the mountain. I didn't. I just did the outline. Because I think that's going to look a lot more strong. Here, I'll show you. And it does immediately. It's, it's stronger. So Joel says... Almost wouldn't want to put lines on those clouds either since they're so soft. Yeah, you know, you can make that choice. That's totally, I, I would agree. If you don't put lines on it, they're gonna look softer. Um, and uh, that's where your creativity as like a, 
the creator of this page comes in. You get to decide where you want texture and what you want your lines to look like and and uh, if you want to even work on something like that. You can you can certainly overwork an image. That that is a thing. And you know you've gone too far when it's like oh I've lost that feeling that I had. So partly what I'm doing when I'm going through and I'm working on a page is paying attention to my feelings. And I'm making choices based on the feeling that I'm getting and, and that this thing's giving me. And so, like you said, you like the softness of those clouds. You That's one thing you really like. And you are afraid to like ruin that and hurt that. That's okay. The clouds are there already. Um, so I would say listen to that. Yeah, so today I'm going to be working on some other parts. So I have the uh, rest of the background here to finish. I have the top of the fence. Um, I have a butterfly and uh, a little happy worm, some ground. Maybe I'll think about adding other effects, but really I think a lot of this stuff will, will, will uh, take a little while. So I, as always, I just kind of pick where I, where I want to start, and I want to see this background come to life a little more. So I think I'm going to work on this cactus here, cacti. I'll probably keep it similar to this one. I'll show you a little uh, up-close version of it. Some nice straight lines in there, but I break it up with a bit of like fur, little like almost like fur marks. They're meant to be, you know, needles from a cactus, so... You can keep them sharp and then there's just some added details there so really there's there's not real rhyme or reason to it I add needles where I feel like I would like them add the dots where I want them as well and then straight lines where just kind of like I suppose these are they're stylistic choices so where I put a straight line versus where I make it squiggly or or sharp or almost like these W effects and if you do it quick enough and you're able to kind of navigate that then you get this kind of fun cartoon effect and it looks a bit more silly and I think playful which uh, kind of matters it is after all kind of cartoonish And if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Or if you know anyone that is up right now and wants to, uh, might want to hang out with you and do something, you could always watch this and discuss it. Or, uh, you know, download the page. It's free right now and draw. So sometimes I follow, um, just follow my feelings. So I worked on this and then I just kept kind of working down because the lines continued here. Then I worked here, continued here, down to this guy. And I still want to keep doing it. I want to go here. You go wherever you want. You might go up here and then go up and over. Um, you know, or you might jump to 
things wherever. It's funny to to kind of just move along with it and see see how you do it, you know. And maybe that is like part of the meditative quality of it. It's you you're following lines that really have inherent instruction or intention to them, but you're kind of just moving around like swimming. So I'm using, uh, if you want to draw with me, I, I'm using a mechanical pencil, Stedler 0.5 uh, size, which is the, the thickness of the lead. And I find that 0.5 is, it's a bit fine. 0.7 is a bit like a normal pencil lead that you will, you'll find and probably have used. The funny thing about it is, once in a while you can come across 0.3, which is teeny tiny. I have a 0.3 pencil around here somewhere and I never use it. Uh, it's a bit too fine. And then uh, as well I have a 0.9. So normal is 0.7, I have a 0.9, which is a bit too thick. I, I guess I just don't do enough drafting to, to need that precision of uh, dimension. And then I do have one that is quite thick that's an actual drafting pencil. I don't know where it is now, but it uh, it's very thick lead. It's probably like 1.4 or something crazy. It has its own sharpener on it because it's, it's about the size of like uh, pencil lead. But it's mechanical, which is pretty awesome. And that one's great for doing like big areas. And mechanical pencil is really great because you, you get to have a, a sharpened pencil whenever you want. You just break off the tip and, you know, click out a, a couple times. So, yeah, we... Uh, I decided to kind of finish this one today because we, we did a uh, five days of drawing in the morning um, and that went really well. We had we had uh, varying amounts of people and some people just stopped in to check out what it was and then left. Some people hung out and drew. Some people asked questions and learned a little bit. And it was really fun for me. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, because I get to sit here and draw it and, and kind of give some guidance uh, where possible. And then, you know, I'm sure the people that came got, got stuff from it and seemed to enjoy it. So we thought we would continue it. And then, uh, so now we're doing it in the evenings. And right now we're just kind of working out what, what we might focus on. I don't think it'll always be copia line pages. Sometimes I'm just going to draw. Maybe work on some designs of my own. Um, future copia pages um, and then maybe once in a while we'll we'll feature a page for free or we'll draw on pages that we we actually sell on our website so if you're interested in joining you can join for free but uh, you may have to buy the page if you don't have the book or um, or it isn't a free day Okay, Glenn asks, how can I add depth to the mouth of the butterfly? Okay, I can answer that. The mouth is kind of tiny. Uh, let's see, so if I start on him, let me just add a line going around his mouth and then his teeth. I'm just going to draw along the lines that are already here and assume that's where you're at. Okay, so we have we have lines on the, you see the chin and the mouth. Now, how do I add depth to that? I guess you have to kind of think of it in 3D. So what parts are like in front of other parts, right? And then how would lighting, uh, let's say, be affected by those parts? See the light on my hand here? So often what I just think about is, okay, well, teeth are usually inset. So automatically I can just draw draw this a little bit darker here. Maybe that puts his teeth back a little bit more. I often like to draw a line on the side. 
to give him a smaller set of teeth, deepens uh, his mouth, so then it goes beyond that. So you don't have to stick just to the lines. You're allowed to, to roam, you could say, and uh, put parts elsewhere if you like. Like put lines wherever you like and add, add some depth. That's a tricky one though, because it means kind of considering three dimensions. And yeah, that might be a bit uh, challenging. Because depth, depth is automatically kind of tricky. I wonder if I should draw it um, on a piece of paper rather than try to just show it here. Because let's say this is a simple mouth. Okay, so mouths have teeth. So normally what I would do is I would put like, for a cartoon, I might put a little line in the middle separating the top and bottom teeth and then these teeth on on the sides here they're not in front and teeth curve around so if I did like a top view let's say of teeth a row of teeth they curve around so when something curves like that if you add a gradient going from darker to lighter so the light isn't getting back here very well it's blocked by the mouth and it's like deeper it's farther away from us you do that to this side too. Very subtle gradient. Automatically you add some depth. Now what if we add a little bit of a thicker line on top for some shadow from that upper lip. We could add some detail here. Or you, you could even open the mouth more. Just make this line thicker. Or open it up all the way. So those are some simple ways to actually add some depth. It's tricky on this one because his mouth's so small that you can muddy that area pretty easily with that. But I appreciate the question. Hopefully that helped you. So I'm just taking my time. I'm actually not rushing. You know, for the first few videos of our series, I definitely I was rushing to try to do the whole picture. But really, when I work on a drawing book or sketchbook um, or a copia page, to me, it's about enjoying making the lines. You know, the finished result is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's cool, but it's just like short lived in a way. And it took me years to kind of get to that point where it's really not about the end product. The end product could be good. It could be awesome. But it really is about the journey. And it just sounds cliche to say it, but truly it is. The journey is what's interesting because those are the hard marks that you're making, you know. Every mark takes concentration and intention and all that. And so you have to, like, you have to walk on that that wall the, very carefully so given where the sun is so jenna asks where should the chicken and the butterfly shadow go <laughs> well i i cheated a bit here because uh i on my little bits i've added some light source so here's the sun and you see this side of the face Oh, okay. So you see that you see this side of the uh, the pole is lighter than this side of the pole. This side of the face is lighter than this side of the face. Although, actually, maybe I did it right over here. Maybe the fence was the only area I did it wrong. The sun is over here. That's your main light source. So the lights come in this way towards stuff. So this one's right, actually, a little bit here. But this. Uh, this pole would actually block the light from the sun and drape this uh, this chicken in darkness. So it's hard to say. Uh, normally you have a dynamic light above, uh, you know, so they're kind of lit as if the sun's higher in the sky. And I, so I kind of cheated. Uh, that's very true. 
Oh, and uh, I'm t I'm asked to give a shout out to Arrow and Ray. This looks like they're tuning in. So thanks for thanks for coming to watch. I hope you guys are having some fun. What kind of bird is it? I think it's a chicken. I think it's a chicken. Eric asks, what kind of bird is it? Yeah, got to be a chicken. And I call him a happy chicken because he's so colorful and he's, he's so happy. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to work on my butterfly still. I started working on it because of Glenn. So I'm going to try to finish it and see how I do the, the wings. I'm pretty curious how I'll do them. Because I, I design these things just for simple lines. But in the end, when I start uh, playing with it, I want to add detail and shadows too. And I'm going pretty slowly around the arc here because I don't really, uh, I don't want to screw up my line. So I want to take my time and go gently around. You know, it's like driving a, in a roundabout. You don't go faster <laughs> necessarily. Faster is not necessarily safer. You know, that's not the way to get a nice curve. So you, uh, you go a little bit slower through it so you're safer. Let's see. So yeah, if anyone has questions, feel free. I'll try to answer them. You know, if it comes to kind of drawing, if you if you have struggle with anything with drawing, or you're just curious how to do something, this is definitely a good time to ask. And uh, hopefully everyone's being safe out there in this quarantine. I feel like I'm the new Jimmy Fallon and nobody's caught on yet. Except, except you people. So I'm giving a little bit of attention to these, these dots inside. Because I find when I'm drawing, I like to do, I like to strike a certain balance of weight, line weight. If you have too many heavy lines or too many thin lines, not enough heavy lines, it can really feel kind of imbalanced and then uh, something feels off about it. Okay. So you do whatever you want to this, by the way. These pages, they're like, it's like a coloring book. You're supposed to do whatever you want. You make the lines you want. You can make them say things. My girlfriend has, uh, I forget what she did to these guys, but I know he says something. A little thought bubble here that says something like, and I'm pretty sure he says hola, which is uh, Mexican for hello. Or is it Spanish for hello? So the worm actually, you could add depth to his mouth. His mouth is a bit bigger and it actually very much does uh, the thing that I drew here, this thing. You can see it does the same thing. So if you wanted to shade the sides of his teeth a little bit, you have to be very gentle yeah, with your lines. Yeah, I think it's I think it's Mexico. I always imagine this was Mexico. So 
So actually the yellow, uh, the yellow tinge to this page was meant to kind of resemble that a bit. For some reason that's just how I view it. Mexico is this much hotter place, which I'm pretty sure it is, closer to the equator. Can't be colder. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie says she just noticed the chicken has like a suit on. Well, that's what he was. I, I, I kind of pictured like uh, one of those Mexican, um, I don't know, members of a, like a Mexican, Mexican band. I forget what they're called now, but so he's got like the frills in the front, some nice buttons. So he, really, he, he should be ready to, about to go on stage or serenade somebody while they're eating pasta. That's actually one of the fun fun things about these these pages. I do actually try to put in little details, and uh, that's the thing about art. Um, art, uh, you know, like reading books, it's about reading words, and art can be about reading images. So to see, uh, so when you look at a picture, like a, a painting or a drawing, you'll notice some things first. Some things will stand out right away. Some things will stand out next. They'll be at the next thing that you noticed. And some stuff you may never notice. It really depends how long you look at the image. And if you sit there and you, you analyze it and you try to get the whole, the whole picture. Yeah, mariachi band, that's it. Does he have a name? No, it's Happy Chicken, that's his name. <laughs> it is like that. Jenna says it's like he's introducing the worm. It almost is, but it's like he's introducing his dinner. I gotta make sure my phone's plugged in here. Pardon me. My phone uh, has to charge. Greg, hmm. I think, I think I should name him. I'm gonna call him Ronaldo. Uh, let's get see for a three. Let's get thumbs up for Ronaldo or uh, uh, hearts for Greg. <laughs> Oh, we got one one for Greg, I think. Huh? Ronaldo. Greg. Is that two more for Greg? What are the stats on this? I don't even know. No. Oh, based on the number of uh thumbs up coming in <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's uh Ronaldo. How about uh, Ronaldo Greg Chicken? That's his full name. All right, I think he looks pretty great. I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot to him. Pretty simple lines. I did this, this thing. I set a new rule actually, so I put a dot in the center here broke the line a little bit. And this is meant to create a sort of gradient. So as I'm drawing it over, doing these arcs, I take it, I break it, put a dot, and continue the line. And that breaks him up, that adds texture, and it just makes him look a little bit more three-dimensional, actually. Because the dot is on the very peak of this cylinder, which that's all worms really are. They're this long, fleshy cylinder that just eats things and poops out dirt. And really, we're all worried like worms if you think about it. Let's 
so keep on wiggling. So now I'm just working on these little dirt textures. And I'll probably choose some thicker lines to make it look a bit more three-dimensional, like maybe um, maybe this dirt is just a little bit more, uh, it's a little deeper here. I know there's a little, there's a puddle here, so this dirt might be wet, wet dirt. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just going to have it be inset a little bit, and I'm going to be okay with that choice. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, he was, uh, someone asked me how to do feathers to add texture to him, and, and yeah, that, that to me was, was a pretty cool way to do it. Where's his family? Uh, the chicken's family or the worm's family? I think the worm's family are probably, uh, buried, they're probably digging through the ground somewhere. The chicken's family is probably hanging out in the chicken coop. He's out just like out for a stroll, you know, going for a little walkie poo. Although, so chickens are, are they hers? I think I had this discussion last time. I don't know if it's hens are female, roosters are male, so then all chickens really are female. I don't know, it seems very specific to me. Yeah, that's what it was. And isn't he saying hola? Or is that the, you made the butterfly say hola? And he gave him a, you gave him a rosary, so he's like a really Catholic worm. So even though this line wasn't here to separate these blades of grass, I know they're separate blades of grass. So I can go ahead and do that. And then blades of grass tend to have a uh, an arc to them as well. So I'm just gonna draw a center line because leaves tend to do that. I like to turn my page because of how my hand is positioned, which will become pretty normal on these videos. What'll be interesting, um, if you're interested in drawing and actually learning to freehand draw, I'm gonna be doing some of that in some of the future live streams we're gonna do. Cause really we have like, we have a 30 page book of, of copy line, um, you know, pages, which we're, we, I think we're gonna make available online. So if people wanna buy a page and draw along with us once in a while, they can do that. But that's not enough to cover like, you know, months and months. So. In the end, I'll probably end up just drawing, designing some things, and then some days I'll do this, draw along in my copy book. Um, but then other days we're just gonna we're just gonna draw, and I can talk about drawing and some of the methods to to draw on your own because really that's what we're interested in is supporting people's drawing. And I'm a professional drawer, so I do it all the time. Learn to do it very well. And I still enjoy my copy book. It's awesome because I get to make really cool lines, and I don't have to deal about uh, deal with the idea of coming up with things to draw, which is very uh, annoying sometimes. All right, there we go. The butterfly is saying "Si feliz" on mine, which is Spanish for "be happy." Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. So I'm just going to thicken this line up. All right. So next, so I've done most of this, this stuff down here, at least the basic lines. I'm going to add texture and detail all throughout this because there's so much opportunity for it. But I'm going to finish my line work first, I think. Um, which means the church, the mountain, I think even the the clouds. You could leave the clouds, keep them light. 
uh, finish this fence. And I might finish the fence first because it's, it's a frame. So the fence frames the image. So if I finish that first, um, it might feel a bit more grounded, which I like. Can you come to my house? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you just come, especially now, the day age we're living in. I don't know what they're saying out there, but it's just open house here. Not sure what the government's recommending. Haven't been too paying attention, so we're we're throwing we're throwing parties every day. J K L O L. Don't call the cops. So as I follow the line, line here, I'm not going to painstakingly do it. I'm not going to worry about, you know, making it perfect. This is a wooden fence. So in fact, I'm making my line more textured on purpose. So I'm following these wood lines. You know, and if you want to quote me um, on the things I say during my broadcast here, you can. I'm very quotable. I've been told that I'm very quotable. Um, you can quote me on that. So when drawing this building, I really am going to pull my line. So I'm going to start on these points and I'm just going to flick toward the direction I want to go. The lines can stay still a bit loose, but you want to do that flick so that they they at least have this kind of like this kind of straight quality to them. They don't have to meet perfectly at the ends, but they have to um, they have to seem at least straight. And that's that can be difficult, right? So especially when you're you're drawing slowly and trying to go across your page, you're gonna wobble. So I don't want that. I want I want the effect of a uh, hard edge. Now, that might be challenging to you. You might need to want, want to practice that on another piece of paper before you apply it here. I've I've done that kind of thing a lot. So to me it doesn't make me nervous. Um but then again, I'm I'm not that nervous about making mistakes. So Very nice. Yeah, don't call the cops. I say that a lot. It's a catchphrase of mine. So I kept the church simple. It's the challenge of uh, making a copiographic page is you can really only work with a few colors um, to keep it all kind of working well together. So this top roof triangle, you can see it's one color. Here, I'll hold it up closer so you can see that. But in fact, in three dimensions, it's a pyramid, right? So if I draw a line going straight up here, all of a sudden, now this has its own roof plane, and now this one does too. I don't know how else to explain that right now. So hopefully that made sense. I'm gonna take my time with this cross because it's very tiny. Now I did put a uh, this church in here because I know in Mexico, there's a lot of churches. I think it's a fairly Catholic place, but I might just be basing that on 
just stuff that I've I've heard movies and, and things Jenna asks, uh, what lines can I add to the grass without overdoing it? All right, so this grass here, I assume, is what you're talking about. So you have these kind of open areas that's clearly grass because it's green. So how do I, how, what lines can I add without overdoing it? Before I draw them, let's talk about it here. So if I were to depict grass, well, gla grass is like a blade, right? So it's this single kind of plant that comes out of the ground like that. So when you see clumps of grass, usually I draw them like this. So you could say that's like some grass. You could do little bits. Maybe there's little bits standing out. This is kind of a side profile view of it, right? You could do a couple like that. You could add a little flower. So you can do it uh, really in any arrangement you can. Usually I try to feel out and balance my lines. So decide, okay, I think it needs a little bit more uh, here. One sec, I got a little cat out. Trap my cat in here with me to see see how long he'd, he'd last. Oh man, how many how many pencils do I have? Whew, lots, too many. Um, I I have a lot of these mechanical pencils, but I've got like loads of uh, these pencils. Got all these pencils. So many pencils, really too many. And that's that's not even half of them. So here, I'm gonna add some, some more lines. And I'm gonna do it a little bit at a time. And you don't just wanna like, I would think you wouldn't wanna just add these over and over. Just like with these, these bushes, I've, I pick spots to add them. And how you arrange that uh, is called a composition. So you're composing, you're designing uh, this grass as well when you start adding it. So you can have some areas that have a little bit more than others. You could add little little leaf shapes in here. You could add just little dots. You can draw on these corners. Kind of continue that line with just a few little bits. You could draw grass around these bushes. And it doesn't have to be open like this one. Could be kind of just a closed line. So I would say kind of feel it out where you think uh, you could use a little more weight, maybe like a little more um, attention. How do I, I want someone to put a little bit more attention right here. It just feels a bit empty. So I'm gonna add something here. So Michaela says, tips for the chicken. Well, it's tricky. So I don't think I have another book down here. I'm looking. It'd be nice if I had a, a blank version for you to look at. Let me see if I do. I don't think I do at the moment. Here's, a, here's an old version. I don't know if this would matter. This is a pretty old version. So I'll show you. I'll compare it for you. You can see that the chicken is the centerpiece of this whole picture. 
he's really the focal point. He takes up most of the space. He's right in the middle. He's got these big eyes that make you want to look at him. So my main tips would be to really just in, enjoy putting the focus on him. All this other stuff is kind of secondary. You're going to look at these other characters. You're going to look at the sun and the cactus and all this stuff. But he's the main focus. So the way I did it, really, uh, with the help of people watching, was all this texture on the on the feathers. I would recommend looking at pictures of feathers to see how these patterns ought to go, the directions. Uh, added texture, little bits of texture. I really made his eyes kind of beautiful by um, by really respecting the negative space here around. Uh, so I don't want to just add texture to everything willy-nilly. I'm picking and choosing. And really, he becomes the center point. You look at these leaves first, or sorry, these feathers, because of how, how nice they look. How old am I? I am 30. Uh, I want to say five but I might be 36 <laughs> I think I'm 36 in September and I've been drawing my whole life possibly gonna buy the book quarantine is making me beyond bored uh, would the dragon page be included oh definitely I definitely recommend it here I'll show you the dragon page so this has, I think, all the pages. You get all the pages I've made to date, I believe. I think it's only one other page that we wouldn't be giving away, and that's the one we made for, for Christmas. So this is a picture of Santa Claus. That's the only one that wouldn't necessarily come with it, but we give you a couple extra chicken pages so you can, you know, do that one a few times if you want or share it with a friend of yours. Um... And then we also have a page that's exclusive to uh, the first few hundred copies of the book. Um, it's called, uh, I want to say it's called The Hairdo. Um, and it's a pretty wild, kind of psychedelic looking image. Yeah, you're curious about the dragons. Dragon page is awesome. I'll probably end up drawing that one uh, really soon because it's pretty rad. You know, I try to give a real variety of dragon types, so if you're interested in dragons, this page ought to really be a thrill. So, like, you got these really awesome shapes, really nice textures, uh, patterns, the gradients, the way the color shifts really helps with the uh, lighting. So the way the fire is, like, shooting out and, and uh, the stretchy parts and the tongues, just the attitudes of the dragons, it's great. So yeah, uh, I'm going to be doing this every day for a while, other than maybe weekends. So if you're curious and you want to just join in and you want to ask questions and continue to learn and grow, uh, you know, improve your drawing, definitely come here and, and I'd like to think I'm a pretty good resource for it. I've been working professionally, oh man, far too long. I've been running my own business for 11 years, but I think I've been working probably for like 15 and but I've been drawing my whole life and working quite hard to to improve and so I've gotten to a level of drawing where I'm actually a fan of my drawing so when I draw I I, I really love what I've done and that I, that wasn't like it uh, that for most of my my drawing career Let's see, I'm just fixing my lead here. So I'm working my way up into the mountains. And I'm just gonna focus on the lines at first. I think the lines are the foundation. So the edges here, um, they all really suggest where to put the lines. When you put those in, from there you get to kind of decide where you go. Can I show the post uh, close up? I'd like to add detail. Yeah, I didn't add a lot of detail to it myself. I did some extra lines here. Little crosshatch marks, little flicks. Um, same with up here. 
you know, you got some darker lines fading into a thinner, lighter line there, but really, really hammering in on these corners, really making sure those are nice and hammed, you know. Maybe a double line on this edge to really show that there's there's two sides of the post. And I could add more detail. I probably will end up adding more detail to it. But with these, with the post, it's wood grains, they're like water running. And they have little like whirlpools, you know? So as long as you're like thinking of it in a flowing way and you could throw in a whirlpool once in a while, drawing wood's actually really easy. But it's a pattern, right? That's a, a, a uh, with rules that you can learn. I think it's I think it's suggesting it's time to get a new a new setup, hey. Yeah. It did. Definitely did. Uh, well, my phone just like went went to the, which is what I'm shooting this on. It just went to the main screen, and uh, there was no no button to like restart it, which is uh, a question to me because I don't uh, I don't know what happened. Well, hopefully everyone can get, can get back on. I think next time I gotta make sure my phone's fully charged and like, um, probably reboot it a few times. <laughs> and it's probably time to get a new one. Thanks for rejoining whoever rejoined. And welcome Adriana, I don't think you were watching. Oh, uh, we gotta get Eric back on here. So I'm getting close to finishing it. I'm really liking what I've done. Glenn, you said you wanted to add more details to your fence. Are you just in general wanting more details, or are you, are you thinking it uh, it's not detailed enough in like the the drawing itself? So in order to keep these clouds alive, I'm still trying to do a flick, but this flick has a curve. That way it's, it's more like one stroke. Oh no, except this one. Oh man, the one time I'm gonna erase. So if you, if you, aren't drawing super heavy, you actually can erase in these pages a little bit. We specifically had them printed, um, and that's in the book. We had them printed, offset printing, which means the ink soaks right in. So adding texture in general, um, yeah. So when you're drawing and you're working on a picture, you just gotta think about what uh, you want to give attention to. Now that's that's speaking from a point of view of like I'm constructing an image that people are gonna look at. You may just wanna draw and add more detail. That's totally fine. I, I think in that case, um, you can just add detail to your heart's content. How I would do that is like I said, I would totally flow around here. Keep adding these kind of flowing lines and make sure they're all kind of parallel. I'll go in the same direction. You can inset other shapes inside of them. You can have lines come up, just kind of trail off into the, the surrounding lines. Okay. It's wood, so I would say because of that texture, it's, it, it probably actually would be quite textured. And if you can look up or go look at some pictures of wood, take some pictures of wood even, 
if you, if you have some old rustic wood lying about. I know you do, Glenn. Go look at your the shelves you built. Go look at your table. And you'll see some interesting bits there, and you just try to work those in a little bit. And then you can add, add some more. But because I added all this detail here now in the middle, um, it's off balance a little bit. Up here, it's really blank, not a whole lot, so I'll probably just continue doing something like that. following the, the natural, uh, you know, waves of the, the wood here. And adding those little, those little whirlpools. They're really knots is what they are, but let's not talk about that. To add some depth here on the side, I, mean, I am going to add like a nice thick line, and hopefully, I think it does it nicely. It sets apart that uh, that that beam from this pole. Hey Wes, uh, thanks for coming by, man. Yeah, I think I will. I think we're gonna be we're gonna be doing these for the fork the I don't know the coming while. <laughs> I'm all stocked up on food. Gonna try not to leave home. Just gonna sit here and look forward to 6.30 p.m. Pacific time for drawing with Dave. So now I am going in, and I, because all the line work is pretty well done, except for this one cloud here, I think it's a good time to start looking around at what, uh, what needs some love now. You know, what isn't standing out enough. And then the solution to making things stand out a little more really depends on what it is. So here, the solution will be some thicker lines, because... I want this cactus to stand out from the background it's on. And so we're also thinking of doing these more at night time because I think more people will end up watching it. I'm even noticing a few people popping on that I haven't seen on here before so that's great. These pages if you don't know this page is available for free right now so if you have a printer you can go uh, oh shoot I think the description's even wrong now I don't know if it saved the other video if it did you can find a link there otherwise it's available on the website um, or in the book if you bought the book so we made a book and you can draw along on some of the future pages that we do, because I'll be working from a lot of our, our copia line pages. One sec here. So I hope I hope you guys come and join. Try try drawing, because I actually made this for everybody. I think everyone should have some creative outlet. And if you don't, drawing could be a good one. Copy line makes it so you don't actually have to be able to draw to be able to draw. It's kind of frustrated me that people didn't draw, and the excuse was always they just can't. And I know they can, but it's hard. So I understand that. So this is my answer to that, to make it less hard. So the book is available on our website, but we can we could always bring it to you at some point, at least, you know, with quarantine masks on. But if you're looking for something to do now, uh, this is a nice meditative thing to do in some spare time. And 
I'm going to be doing this every day too, so feel free to pop on when you see it online. And if the page is available on the website, then we're probably only charging a dollar for it. This one is free today. But the whole point is just to encourage drawing. Because drawing actually is really good for you. It helps your, your mind actually uh, rest and feel a bit more whole. Because I think, I think often people just don't have a creative outlet and they, they miss something from that. So I'm just continuing to add just little flicks of stuff in the feather, little details, and uh, things like that. Hey Mark, welcome man. So Mark, yeah, we totally, this is great. You'll have to come by and, and check this out again sometime. This is a, a, a something I invented. So I'll show you what the page looks like if you're curious, but it's this here. This is a Kobe graphic image. And the idea is that it's a reverse coloring book. It's the opposite. So um, rather than having lines that you color, I have colors that you line. So this is one that I finished. It's finished now. I think I'm done. I don't think there's anything else I want to do to it. You know, these kind of open spaces, sometimes I add little little bits because it's a bit too open let's see the dirt i would just add lines and little flicks because it's dirty you can do that you could add little lumps you could add little rocks and that's just all circles and you know cloud type shapes i don't always line in black in fact before i go i'll show you so this is the book here and you can see that it's on the cover here, it's showing that it's in black, but you, you really don't have to. So the inside cover, you actually get to do yourself. Let me see if I can find a page that I didn't do in black. Cause I've done, I've worked on them a bunch this week, all in this book. I did one that's very black. Kind of flipping through it now and here's one I did with color so you can see I have uh, colored pencils did black green kind of a brownish and I, I think it actually works really great with colored pencils super well in fact so I'll flip through the book and just have a little little look at some of the ones we'll be doing And there's, there's really awesome stuff here. So I'm not sure what I'll do next, what I'll do tomorrow. And here's one I was working on just for fun. This is a cop. And that's when I was practicing some inking. So end of the day, this, this page was about, uh, you know, the happy chicken. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Hope you guys come and watch some more. Uh, so if you do, that's great, and I'll see you then. Okay, thanks. Bye.